In the last video, we created the person class and added a few properties and a few methods. We're going to continue experimenting and learning from the uh, person class. And then also we're going to print some documents about the design that we just created. So there's the simplest example of what you would have as an object in an object-oriented program. We can create more people than just P. If I wanted to, I could say person, and I'm going to call him P2. He's a new person. And in this case, I can give three different parameters. Let's say this person is 99, and it's called Granny, and the weight is 92 pounds. Let's see if we can print out Granny down here below. I'm going to do a system out print line, and this time I'm going to print three things. I'm going to say name equals, and then I'm going to join strings together. So I'm going to say p2 dot get name. And I'm going to join some more things. I'm going to put in another label. I'm going to say age equals. And then outside of the quotations, I'm going to have the p2.getH. And then you can guess the last one. We're going to say weight equals. Looks like I'm running out of room. So I'm going to maximize my window. And I'm also going to turn on the item called toggle word wrap. So when I get to the end of the line, it will create a new line for me. So let's see if we can get the weight here. So p2.getWeight, and then finally a semicolon. So now let's go and run this program, save the changes, and you can see I have a new string here. Okay, so I'm going to leave a challenge here on the screen for you to do a few more things. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is to create three more people. So I've created p, p2. You could create other people. Let's call this thing a person... Uh, best friend and he is going to be a new person and then you fill in the data inside there and then when you're done print the results okay so this is a good example of how we can use uh, objects to store data objects can not only store data but they can do things let's say we have some other things that we want our person to be able to do so I'm going to create a method this is called a method again and this time I'm going to put in the word void. Void means there is no data returned. Like this one returned an integer. This one returned a string. This one returned a float. This one will not return anything. It is void. But we're going to make this thing called run. And all it does is print a line to the screen. So I'm going to say he is a system out print line running now. Let's save that. Let's go over to our person now. But now, all of my objects have this new ability called run. So if I type in best friend dot, is there a run command? There it is. I type in r, and there is run. Let's see what r does, or run does. So now, it says here we have granny, and the next line is running now. Let's make it even more specific. If I go back into person, and insert the person's name. I could say this dot name and then adjoin it over here and then say is running now. That should allow us to print this. It'll say Tim is running now. Let's check it out. There it says Tim is running now. What would happen if I tried to make uh, any of these other people run? So if I said P run and then I said P2 dot run those should also tell me who's running. There it is. It says Mike is running now. Granny is running now. Okay, here's the challenge I'd like you to make now. Is create several more verb methods. So I created run. Maybe create a walk, talk, jump, and sleep. And add them to the list. So for instance, if I wanted to do walk, I could just simply print a message out and tell me that I'm walking now. And if I wanted to customize it so I can have the person's name, I can put in is walking now. Once I've created these methods, I should be able to use them in my program. So I can say p.walk, and that is now available in my suggestion list. And I can say granny is running and Mike is walking. Now you notice down here at the bottom of these uh, pages here, I've had these getters, get name, get age, and get weight. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to create in this object is called a setter. Setters are how you change the property of an object. So for instance, 
if I wanted to say that this is a public accessible thing and I want to set the age, I would create a function that looks like this. I have an error that says you need to have some kind of a method return type. Well, I'm going to use void and that means I'm not changing or returning anything. However, if I want to set the age of somebody, I would expect them to send me a number. So in this function, I'm going to say a is my input. I'm going to say this.age equals a, and this will allow me to set the age of a person. Let's go back into the person demo, and I'm going to set Mike's age to something else. So let's say p.set, and there it is, set age, and it's expecting a number. So I initial, initially created him as 23 years old. Let's make him a year older. Let's make him 24. And now let's run it. And when it prints out his age, you should see a 24 here. OK, I'm going to pause the video now. And I want you to create setters for the other two variables, a setter for name and a setter for weight. Okay, if you've had your chance to do this, I'm going to finish it up here. You can skip forward if you've already figured this out, but I'm going to say this.name is going to equal n. And the other one is going to be public void set uh, weight, and it's going to be a float. And I'm going to use the letter w for the parameter name. This.weight equals w. Okay, so that's what the other setters look like. Let's say I came back and I wanted to create some more items in my properties. So I'm going to use another string and this is called his URL and let's say his uh, his IQ. We're going to measure that in an integer. So Eclipse is, uh, Eclipse is going to help us out here with creating these setters and getters. I'm going to uh, hover over here and you can see that there is an item that says get getter or create getter and setter for URL. If I choose that it's going to ask me um, get URL and set URL are the names and let's click OK and we should see a new function somewhere in the list so right down here at the bottom it wrote it for me so there is a get URL and a set URL and up here there's another little light bulb that says you might want to do this so let's hover again and let's choose create getters and setters here's another way you could do it if you right click Go down to Source and choose Generate Getters and Setters. It will say, I've noticed that you don't have any for IQ yet. And we can generate these. And we have them created right here. So now, if we were to uh, add those two, like URL and IQ, we would need to put that into our constructor as well. So somewhere in my list here, I have this thing called a constructor. Let's add some more items. Let's say this is his, uh, let's see, his integer is an IQ, and his URL is a string. So now let's go and change these values as well. URL equals a U, and this.IQ equals I. Okay, now these are going to break over here. So Mike and Granny and Tim are missing something. So they are missing his URL. So he is belongs to yahoo.com and his IQ is going to be 102. And let's see, let's do the others. So you can see that I've typed these wrong and the suggestions are saying your Yahoo and your 102 are probably wrong. Let's swap them. So I needed to use IQ first. Let's do that as well. So now, now when I come down to Tim, I'm going to do this correctly. So Tim's IQ is 180, and his URL is www.genius.com. OK. So it looks like everything's running. So now we're finished. We've done the uh, demo code here. And uh, we're going to uh, take a look at some of the requirements for creating the turn-in files here. So we've run the person class. I want you to take a screenshot of the application as it's running. So to take a screenshot is uh, a couple of ways you can do it. In Windows, it's the Print Screen button. And in Macintosh, I think it's uh, Control-Shift-Command-4 or something like that. So look those up. And I just want a picture of the uh, code 
as it's an operation here at the bottom. Here is another requirement. So Java docs. What are Java docs? So Java docs define everything in our in our code and it gives us a nice map of all the methods that we've made. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the uh, generate the Java docs. So let's go to project and choose generate Java doc. I'm going to choose the person class and uh, you can see that I have the Java doc extension listed here. It's in my JDK folder bin Java doc exe. If you don't have anything there, you go to configure and you browse to it. So let's go to look for Java. So I go to C, Program Files, and Java is the folder. And you can see I've done some updates here. So I'm looking for the folder called JDK. JRE does not have what I'm looking for. It's JDK. So I've installed the proper Java development kit, not just the Java runtime environment. Inside here, I look for the bin folder and find Java doc exe and choose open. Now it's ready to go. Let's go choose finish here. And uh, nothing happened, it appears. However, if I go back to my folders and I search for my location for I, where I store my uh, Java projects. So I'm going to the use the users folder under C, users, shad Sluter, and I look for my Eclipse workspace, and I find this guy called person class, and then doc. Here's a bunch of HTML files that have been generated. So I'm going to start with index, and here is the documentation automatically generated that describes my class and all of its methods. So you can see the constructors listed here. It tells me all the, the methods such as get uh, things, get integers, get uh, strings. There's walk and run, get age. So all of the items are listed in my documentation now. The class demo shows me what the uh, class is here. It should be a main event and I've got my entire documentation. So the doc folder is now part of the project. So inside of person class, you can see the binary. Uh, these are the class things that were created by the Java runtime. And I have my document folder now to go with it. OK, to recap what we want to turn in here. I want to see a uh, UML file. So this is a diagram showing me what the class person looks like. I want a screen capture of the output of our application. Zip up the project folder. And so I can see all the code that was created, including the doc files. So that ends the uh, first class here, our person class.